Hey y'all, so I shared with you yesterday that on my drive home, I was listening to a market update from Lawrence Yoon, who is the chief economist for the National Association of Realtors. His job is to gather all of the important information, put it in a way that we can understand how the real estate market is in the entire country. So I wanna go over some of these graphs with you. If you're a graphs person, you're really gonna love this because there are some fantastic visuals of what the nation looks like right now in the real estate industry. Okay, first up, you'll see a graph that is the existing home sales. You'll see three boxes, pre-COVID, you see the production there. 2021, the COVID boom with lower interest rates in the twos and 30% interest. And then you'll see 2022, the impact when the interest rates were reversed and they went higher into the sevens as the market corrected. Next, you'll see a graph that shows the unit sales beginning in 2000. Notice how much higher we are compared to 2008 and 2009. Over in 2022, we are, we're much higher than that. We're about equivalent to 2014 right now. Keep in mind that this graph is for the whole nation and not specifically to Texas. So there's a lot of variables in there. Okay, next is new construction versus existing home price, existing home sale prices. So the top line is showing new construction prices. The bottom line shows that existing home sales are hugging this amount. Again, this goes all the way back to 2000. It's just showing the stability there that existing home sales are, are staying right with new construction. So that's a good thing. Okay, slide number four. Is a home price crash coming? There are opinions, but here are some facts. I think that those are more important. So there's two columns here. You'll see the last housing cycle, which is the foreclosure cycle that happened between 2009 and 2012 because of what happened in 2008. So let's compare that to what it looks like today. So today there are job losses, but other industries are creating new jobs. So when you look at the net, there are not as many job losses today or job cuts as shown on this graph as there was back in the last cycle between 2009 and 2012. There are far more people working today than there were before. Take a look at the inventory on the market toward the bottom. This is a basic supply and demand principle. You'll see that the supply is much lower. Too much supply in the last cycle equals the prices to crash, right? Prices go down. Today, we see much less inventory, much, much less properties on the market for sale, which is a lesser chance of a price crash. Also, we see much less homes in foreclosure right now there on the bottom line. On this slide, you will see another view of inventory shortage back to 2000. This means that we're in a seller's market. Inventory is low. You're in a seller's market, right? Supply and demand. It keeps the home prices stable or possibly on the rise the lower that we get with the supply. This is a long-term graph for single-family housing. It shows all the way back to 1960. I think that's very interesting to see such a long term of what, what our economy looks like, what our nation looks like all the way back then. So the prior 10 years are shown in the box there. I think that's the most relevant to, to us right now. The population is rising. We all know that. How do you think this might infect low housing inventory when we have more people I do think that investors and rental owners may get creative with this problem. We could possibly see more apartments and stuff being built in bigger cities, and that, that has shown to be proven. This next graph is apartment growth. So talking about higher population, you will see how apartment growth, rents rising, things like that, it's all hand in hand, right? So prices, prices went up in 2021, kind of going down in 22, 23, we're even lower. We expect that to level out. This is based on a percentage there on the left of what, what a normal range would be. So as those apartments are being built, of course, the prices are going to level out again with a supply and demand. Do keep in mind that this is a national average on every one of these slides. This is not specific to East Texas, but I do feel that it is very relevant to know and it's important important knowledge to have about our market because it does affect somewhat, you know, our rent houses that we have here that are available in Shelby County and in the surrounding areas. It's affected by that a little bit. Okay, this next slide is about hopeful signs of mortgage rates. 
So you will see back to September of 2022, this is what the mortgage rates have done. Um, I know that in our mind, it feels like a roller coaster and kind of looks that way. So the circled portion at the top, that is the 20 year high that happened recently. So in the past 20 years, which is obviously not shown on this graph, but this is a 20 year high. It's when we went to the sevens. I will tell you that the media is saying that the feds will raise the rates two more times by spring, and that is correct. However, know that the market has already accounted for this. You're not gonna see that kind of change um, like in your local market when you go to the bank and get um, a pre-approval letter or something from your lender. You're not gonna see that increase. We're, we're actually trending down a little bit. We're inching there, but... Um, but we're going in the right direction. So we've already corrected and accounted for that, but you are gonna see it on the media. This is one of the reasons why I enjoy doing these videos for you because sometimes the media, they wanna tell the bad stuff, except the bad stuff is already over and we are healing and it's getting better. So I think it's important to put that out there. Um, so Lawrence Yoon does believe that the new normal for interest rates is gonna be around 6%. Uh, personally, I feel that is a healthy Healthy margin for our market, um, you know, I like I like 5, 5.5 5 a little better, but 6% uh, is not unreasonable. I mean, if we, if we had a graph that went all the way back to 1960 for mortgage interest rates, and I'm sure that's available online somewhere, um, it would be a crazy amount. I mean, we're, we're talking like 18%. So anyway, if we had the opportunity to purchase a house in 1960 for 18% as a crazy example, um, don't we all wish we could have done it because right now it would have been worth a whole lot more and we would have proudly paid that 18% because we understand how homes appreciate over time. So anyway, just a thought there. So Lawrence did mention that he does not expect for interest rates to get in the two or 3% range within his lifetime. So for the next several years, um, I'm not expecting to see that either. I fully trust in his expertise and his research. Um, we're not going to see two and three again. Okay, next here is, are we in a recession or not? So it has, in parentheses as at the top, China, Europe, and Ukraine. Obviously, these are countries that are having problems right now, and it does affect the U.S. So we're wondering, you know, with all those problems going on, how is the, how is the U.S. economy? Like how, how are we right now? Are we in a recession? So here's a chart. Based on the first quarter of 2020 that you'll see on the far left, that is where we were first quarter 2020. Here's where we are third quarter 2022. Obviously, we're a little farther than that now. Uh, but on this graph, you can see that we're we're okay. Um, not compared to the beginning of 2020, it doesn't look like we're in a recession. This last slide shows payroll jobs. So I do feel that the reason that we are above the 0% line there for um, the previous slide showing are we are in a recession, I do believe that is because of jobs. We are at a record high right now of job availability. Yes, there are industries that are laying people off, but there are also other industries that are creating new jobs. And Lawrence Yoon is actually hearing that these people are able to find a job within three or four months, maybe doing something a little different, maybe something similar, but still using their skills and uh, making the same amount or even more money. Um, I know this all works hand in hand with inflation, but thankfully there are jobs available on the table. And um, I think that helps keep us out of a recession. I do know that... Um, he shows that Texas has 6.3 more jobs compared to pre-COVID. So that's fantastic. Um, that means there's more availability out there. Okay, so I have shared with you all that I know from the video that I watched yesterday. This was uh, put out a couple weeks ago on the Century 21 YouTube channel. Um, this is, you know, the whole thing is there for you to look at. If you have any questions about the stuff that you've seen here, I think it's important uh, for you to reach out to me. and. Um, Let's talk about how it affects you, how it affects the East Texas market and and what we need to do to kind of combat some of these things and moving forward, um, how do we help you make the best decisions? So y'all have a great day and uh, I'll be back soon.